favorite stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, my, my own interests, my own tastes are pretty broad. So, you know, I love most kinds of music and um, love a lot of old time radio, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's some, what are some of the rarest items? Or the rare, well, we have many unique items here. That's what I like mean. Like Library of Congress field recordings, for instance, um, which were made in the 30s and 40s. So, you know, the first recordings of Lead Belly, Muddy Waters, Woody Guthrie, and other people, you know, those are unique master recordings. Okay. Yeah, I've heard Muddy's recordings. There's a program called Blues Before Sunrise in mm-hmm. Chicago where they played some of those. Um, and uh, what's your favorite part of uh, your job? Favorite part of my job? <laughs> uh, you know, just being around all of this, all this history, all of this, this culture you know, is really amazing. I actually don't have that much time um, to listen to things. You know, usually when I'm doing it, it's to, uh, to identify something where there might be a bit of a mystery about it. Uh, but, you know, um, it's really a tremendous thrill to be uh, uh, working with this, this incredible collection and to be adding to it. I mean, as, as big as it is, it's by no means complete. And um, you know, we're still trying to uh, get many uh, important early recordings into it. And also, you know, many recent things. There are a lot of areas that are very active out there that don't get uh, a great deal of publicity, but they're, they're very important. There are a lot of people involved in them. And that can range from things like choral music to um, you know, handbell choirs, uh, which that's actually a very busy area. You know, there are a lot, a lot of people involved in that music. People composing exclusively uh, for that. So you know, trying to be mindful of all those things and at least get some representation for them in the collection. So what's the goal to, to collect everything that's <laughs> out there in terms of recorded sound? Um, I don't know how realistic that is. You know, that that's. Uh, one of the questions that uh, people are asked most at the library is, do you have every book ever written? And no, we don't. Or even, you know, every, every book in print or every book ever published in the U.S. We, we don't. We've got a lot of them. Um, but it's, you know, the, the goal is not to get every last thing, but to you know, to get as much of the, the published record as possible and to get as much uh, representation as possible for um, what's going on out there in, in recorded sound. What are the biggest challenges in, uh, in what you do? Biggest challenges um, are, uh, I would say, are in um, the actual preservation of uh, recordings. Many of them require very special handling. Um, I used to be an engineer. I used to do that kind of work. I'm not doing it now, but that's a uh, tremendous challenge. Um, and even even when recordings are relatively easy to handle, there are so many of them, and um, transfers are done in real time. You have to get optimal playback, so you know you can't just. Uh, it's not like dubbing off cassettes at home or you know ripping CDs. Uh, it, it's takes a lot of time and, and care to do it properly. Well, these radio transcriptions, I mean, there's some danger with the acetate, isn't there? Uh, yeah, that can happen. Um, it's usually more of a problem with the, the discs that were made for, um, uh, for home use in those years. Uh, but it, um, it definitely can happen with um, the aluminum-based discs. I've found it to be more of a problem with the glass-backed discs that were made during World War II when aluminum was not available. And I mean, the, the biggest problem though for glass back discs is that they break. And so a lot of them were lost simply to breakage before they ever uh, got to us or got into an appropriate archive. But I, my experience, the glass backed uh, lacquer discs are, are prone to delamination more than the aluminum backed ones. Are they simply lost causes then, or do you, is there a way to No, not necessarily. Um, there is, if you can get all the pieces, um, you know, sometimes you can reassemble a, a, a broken glass disc if it's a clean break, um, and you can line up the grooves. Um, they're also, um, we're also experimenting with non-contact forms of playback. There's the Irene system, which, you know, maps a disc and plays back the file that it creates. 
so there's there's hope yet for for some of those discs how much is um and this will be the last question but how much is you going out and you know and seeking out items and how much is uh, you know, just people donating stuff uh it, it's both you know people people contact us frequently um the national jukebox which went online um a month or two ago uh has uh gotten a lot of people in touch with us uh, you know sending in lists of 78s and uh, some some very good lists you know with some unusual discs that they've found or have just been sitting around you know in the attic for for many years so a lot of things come to us that way we we also are in touch with uh with collectors and other archives um, well 